Hi, this is Tim from Tigra Astronomy and you're watching Adventures in 3D. Hi everyone, this is Tim from Tiger Astronomy and I'm going to have a look today at Visual Studio Code and how that can help you with editing your Clipper configs and possibly flashing your firmware. So I'm using Visual Studio Code Insiders which is just like the pre-release version of Visual Studio Code. Everything I'm going to show works exactly the same in the release version. Um, the only reason I'm using the Insiders version is because it keeps, it, um, I have no plugins installed and it keeps, it keeps the system clean as if it was just a fresh installed version. So the first thing to look at is um, we need another icon down here um, that's not there yet and that is the remote tools that Visual Studio Code has. So if you click on the plugins icon here, rather the extensions icon, and then in the search box, just put remote and press enter. And then there are a few things here. Um, but what we're looking for is this one, remote development. And this is an extension pack, which includes several other extensions. So go ahead and install the remote development tools. Click the install button here at the top. And after a few seconds, you see a busy uh, pro, like progress indicator across the top of the extensions bar here. Uh, let's zoom in a bit actually. Um, I'm pressing Control plus to zoom in. There we go. And that looks to be installed. Yes, it is. Okay. So now you notice we've got this extra icon here, the remote explorer icon. So now what we can do is go ahead and click on that. And this, amongst other things, this works with Docker containers, but also it's got SSH targets. So we select SSH targets from the drop down. Now I've got some in here that I've used before. I've got voron.local here, but let's go ahead and add one as if from scratch. So you need to put in here the command that which will be used to access your 3D printer your, that's running Clipper. So normally, if that's on a Raspberry Pi, that's got SSH enabled by default. So um, you need to put in the command SSH and then your username, which is usually Pi on a uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, and then the host name and then dash capital A. So um, I think we have to type it all. Yeah, so SSH pi at foron.local dash A. Okay, just like that. And then press enter. And then it's going to ask me for, um, okay, do I want to update the configuration file that's in my user home directory or in the system wide configuration? And I, I usually default to the ones in my user home directory here. So let me just close this window so we can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and click on voron.local and click the connect icon at the end here. Now this opens a new window in Visual Studio Code. It works a bit strangely. So we can actually close this window now. Um, let's full screen that. And then it's going to ask us at the top here, are we on Linux, Windows or Mac OS? And this is the, the system you're trying to connect to. So being a Raspberry Pi, that will be running Linux. And then um, it's going to ask for the password, which I think I can remember. OK, and then it will go ahead and connect via SSH. And then we need to tell it uh, one more piece of information, which is which directory do we wish to open? And that will take a little bit of time to do this because it's what, what it's doing is actually installing some um, some code on the Raspberry Pi that has some Visual Studio Code support in it because Visual Studio Code is cross-platform and there is an ARM version of it. Um, it's not installing like the full graphical UI. Where are we? Okay, now we need to open a folder. 
and it's prompted us with the default slash home slash pi, which, you know, is a pretty good default. Um, you might prefer to drop down to um, your Clipper config directory, but actually let's just start with that and say OK. Now the, the, the downside of picking a folder quite high up the folder tree hierarchy is that certain features in Visual Studio Code won't work too well, such as if it needs, needs to watch a, a directory for changes, then the smaller the directory tree is that you're watching, the better that works. So if you've got a lot of stuff in your home directory, this might be quite a challenge for VS Code. OK, now it's asking me to log in again. And now um, this is pretty new in recent versions of VS Code. Um, it's asking you, do you trust this directory? And I'm saying, yes, I do, because I've put everything there. So I trust myself. Um, and now we have a complete directory browser of what's on the remote system. And you'll notice I've got my Clipper config directory here. So I can click into that and I can go on down and click on my printer.config and my printer config file opens. Right, now here's a warning down here, and I, unable to watch for changes in this large workspace. Now this is exactly what I was mentioning um, because it, there's a lot of stuff in my home directory. Um, VS Code isn't in its default configuration able to watch for file changes, but that's, that's not a huge problem because I'm not going to be compiling or anything. So it's fine. If, you, if, you, if this bothers you, Click the instructions there and it will tell you exactly how to sort it out. It's just a settings change, I think. Um, OK, so here's my printer config file, complete with syntax highlighting and you get all the power of VS Code. And and you can just go ahead and edit this. And then say if we make um, a small change, say I wanted my minimum temp here to be one. Uh, well, and then you notice that that's got the the dirty icon, that dot there means the file's been changed. So you can just save that with Control S and it saves it remotely. So there's no copying files backwards and forwards. It's just it's just really, really convenient. So change that back to how it was. OK, so the other thing you've got here is um, you can type um, Control apostrophe. And this, this is different on American keyboards. Um, but in the UK it's apostrophe and I think on American keyboards it might be control back tick but if you press that key you get a terminal window and notice this is on the remote system so I've got here a Linux command prompt and so now I can go on down into my uh, clipper directory and I've got full command line completion and all that. And we can probably here go make. I can't remember if it's menu config or menu config. Yeah. Menu config. And you get the little menu thing that it you have to go through to set up your uh, firmware build and I've obviously um, yeah so we're going to use the that guy there and I have a Seeker 1.4 turbo so I want that one and yes that's correct that's correct that's correct um, I think there might be a pin I have to set, but I can't remember. But it's all right. I'm not actually going to flash this. So um, we'll um, just leave that for the moment and we'll save that. And we will make and uh, that will go ahead and compile the firmware. And again, this is all happening on the Raspberry Pi, even though we're still inside Visual Studio Code on Windows which is pretty neat and 
this will produce um, this um, clipper.bin file in the out directory. So if we look now in the file explorer side here, we now have an out directory and we now have this uh, clipper.bin file which is what we just built now if i right click this download that's the, that's the thing i'm looking for we can download this file and we can save that on my desktop clipper.bin actually let's save it as firmware.bin because that's what you most likely need to call it so firmware.bin and look on my desktop we now have do, 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 do. where did he go yeah there it is modified today 27th of the 6th 2021 awesome on my desktop so um that's downloaded the file we can now copy that onto an sd card and put put the sd card into the board and power repower it and that will flash the firmware but in recent versions of Clipper, there's a better way to do that. Now, provided you've got an SD card in your board, which I, I keep SD cards in my boards the whole time. Um, if you go into the scripts directory and have a look in there, you will see there is uh, Clipper, there is flash SD card dot sh. OK, and what that script does is it allows you to copy the firmware image across to your SD card, across the uh, Raspberry Pi, the USB link to your controller board. It will save it on the SD card and then it will reboot the controller board and which will when it reboots, it will it will find that file and flash the firmware. So this is really, really useful utility. And. Um, oh, here we go help is dash h um right so you need to provide two arguments for this and the first one is the um device there are some other optional things which i'll just ignore the first one is the device that you want to flash which is the device serial port and the second one is the type of board that you're flashing because it needs to know what to do with the file so we list the boards by saying dash l and mine is the btt seeker v1.4 this one here so we'll need that later and then we need to know which serial port dev slash serial slash by id i think is what we want okay and it will be one of these so it will either be um, now uh, because I've got two controller boards because I'm running a Voron 2.4 with two Seeker 1.4 turbos. It will be one or other of these boards. We're not quite sure which one. Um, the way to find out is to pull out the USB plug of one of the boards and see which one of these goes away. And then you know which board is which, hopefully. So what you do is you copy that. And then you run the flash script and you put in, you actually have to put slash dev slash serial in there slash by, by ID slash that guy there and then enter and then that will go ahead and download that file to the board and reflash it and there it goes connecting to the MCU and the reason it's not succeeding is because my MCUs are currently in shutdown mode because there's an electrical fault on my printer uh, but normally what would happen at this point is it would connect to the MCU copy the file over to the SD card and then reboot the MCU and then up upon the thing rebooting the bootloader will detect that file on the SD card flash the firmware and you'll be done you don't even have to take the SD card out of the system and it's awesome so well done Clipper okay so that's just a couple of ways um, you can use Visual Studio Code to make it easier to edit your Clipper configs and flash your firmware 
I've been Tim from Tiger Astronomy, thanks for watching and goodbye.